Um, hello everyone, my name is Jeroen van Kutsum and I'm a, a master student at the Vrije Universiteit in Brussels in Belgium. And for my master's thesis, I studied the effects of heat stress and hypoxia on exercise performance. During this study, my promoters were Bart Roelands and Romain Meussen. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this event for inviting me here. It's a dream for every master's student. First up, a short introduction. The topic of this Congress and the talks we already heard this far acknowledge what we already all know. When the competition takes place in high ambient temperatures, this will have detrimental effects on performance. In line with that, also when competition takes place at altitude, this will also have detrimental effects on performance. So they both, separately from each other, cause alterations in circulatory, metabolic, neuromuscular function and central neural system function. In our study, we went combining those two variables, so we combined anti-hyperthermia and hypoxia in order to put a lot of stress on the human body. So the aim of our study was subsequently to examine the effects of a 10 degree ambient temperature difference and a 3,800 meter altitude difference on performance, thermoregulation, physiological and blood parameters and cognition. Our hypothesis for this was Hypoxia will increase the effect of heat stress on performance and vice versa. So the, measure, the methods we used for this were, first up we recruited our participants. We recruited 12 participants until now. Seven of them have completed all their experimental trials. So the, preliminary, uh, so the results you will see today are the preliminary results of those seven completed uh, participants. The study is still ongoing, so the other are busy. All our participants were young of age, male, had to be trained, healthy, and not accustomed to exercise in a warm or hypoxic environment. Once we recruited all our participants, they all started with a VO2 max test, where after the familiarization trial and the four experimental trials could take place. Between each step in this progress, uh, there was one week, and the four experimental trials were done in a, in a randomized order. Uh, the temperature of the experimental trials varied between 50 degrees and 25 degrees. Altitude was 0 meters or 3,800 meters. We combined them together <coughs> and this gave us four different experimental trials. So all these trials were done in the AMST, the Aeromedical Solutions Cabin uh, at the military hospital in Vilvoorde. This is a hypobaric climate chamber. So one trial took approximately one hour and 30 minutes to complete and consisted of three stages. The first stage was the acclimatization stage. It, started, uh, it lasted 30 minutes, uh, whereafter the performance stage started immediately. First in this stage was a five minute warm up at a set pace of 100 watt, uh, whereafter immediately the 30 minute all out self-paced time trial followed. Um, after this performance stage, recovery stage also started immediately. It lasted again 30 minutes and was similar to the acclimatization stage. So you view, uh, you see, you see a few times all parameters on the previous slide. Well, all parameters were the amount of work produced in 30 minutes in kilojoules, the mean wettage, heart rate, saturation levels, blood lactate levels, skin temperature, and core temperature. Of course, we did a statistical analysis in which we used the Bonferroni correction. So the results this gave us were, uh, on this first graph, you see on the vertical axis the kilojoules presented, uh, the kilojoules produced in the 30-minute time trial. On the horizontal axis, we see uh, the four experimental trials presented separately from each other. T15A0 stands for temperature 15 degrees altitude at ground level. So on this graph, we can see that altitude had a significant decrease on performance, this in 15 degrees as well as in 25 degrees. Temperature, however, didn't have a significant decreasing effect on performance, yet we did saw a slightly decrease. Uh, at ground level, this decrease was 1.9%. At altitude, this decrease became greater and reached 5.7%. Next up, the power output distribution. Again, the four experimental trials are presented separately from each other. The full lines uh, are for the trials at ground level, the dashed lines are for the trials at uh, altitude. Blue stands for 15 degrees, red stands for 25 degrees. Uh, on the horizontal axis we see the seven measure points in the time trial uh, of 30 minutes. 
So about this, we can say that altitude, again, had a significant decreasing effect on the power output distribution. Temperature, however, didn't have a significant influence on this uh, power output distribution. Going further with the secondary parameters, so we looked at the mean maximal heart rate. Again, the four trials are presented separately from each other. Um, here, we didn't, uh, uh, we couldn't observe any significant influence, nor from temperature, nor from altitude. But uh, with altitude, we we observed that there was a slightly decreasing effect. This wasn't significant, but it was there. So um, in 15 degrees, this decrease was 5.1 percent. In 25 degrees this decrease became 5.7%. Then the saturation levels. So for saturation, we logically see a greatly significant drop uh, of those levels due to the altitude difference. Temperature, however, didn't, again, hadn't a significant influence on uh, saturation levels. Those saturation levels dropped to uh, a minimum of 65, 60% during the time trial. So here we have the points of the acclimatization stage the warm-up stage, time trial stage, and the recovery stage. Comparing the core temperature. So we first went comparing the core temperature in 15 degrees, and we compared uh, ground level with altitude. Here we saw that altitude had a decreasing effect on core temperature, but it wasn't a significant one. When we did the same comparison, uh, comparison in 25 degrees, we could observe that this decreasing effect of altitude on the core temperature got greater, and also it reaches significance and in the warm-up and at the end of the time trial in TT30. We also looked at the T-core, T-skin gradient. So this is the core temperature minus the skin temperature. And when we compared 15 degrees with 25 degrees at ground level, we saw that temperature had a significant decreasing, uh, decreasing effect on this gradient. So this means that uh, the difference between core temperature and skin temperature decreases when performance is undertaken uh, in a higher temperature. This largely due to the great increase of uh, the skin temperature uh, in comparison with the uh, core temperature due to the temperature difference. Um, yet we couldn't saw any significant interaction effect of uh, trial and time in this comparison. When we did again the same comparison, but this time at altitude, we see again this same significant decrease uh, due to the temperature difference. And also we did found uh, we did found a significant interaction effect of trial and time uh, in this comparison. So this means that the difference of the T-core, T-skin gradient in 15 degrees at altitude is greater than the difference of uh, the T-core, T-skin gradient in 25 degrees at altitude. So all these results gave us the following discussion. There is already much known about the influence of temperature and uh, altitude on performance separately from each other. So in my presentation today, I would like to uh, focus on the influence of those both variables combined with each other. Uh, Buchheit et al. Uh, went also combining those two variables, so heat stress and hypoxia, uh, to look at the influence or the beneficial effects in training camps. Uh, this in the first place to improve our knowledge about it, because there isn't much known about it yet. Um, and yeah, in, in the second place to end, to improve uh, performance when it's undertaken in an environment where both variables are combined. So in our results, we could see that both temperature and altitude separately from each other had an influence on some of our parameters. When we combined those parameters together, they had an influence on all of our parameters. And also, the influence on core temperature and the core skin gradient is significantly reinforced due to the combination uh, of those both variables. Nonetheless, we couldn't observe this effect uh, in performance. So the decrease in performance due to the combination of both variables uh, wasn't significantly different from the decrease in performance due to uh, only altitude difference. An explanation for this could be the greatly uh, significant drop of the saturation levels, which overruled uh, the influence of all other parameters on performance. So to end the conclusion, we can say that our hypothesis is fulfilled. Hypoxia reinforces heat stress uh, and vice versa on some parameters. This was the case uh, for 
core temperature and T corti skin gradient. Some other parameters weren't reinforced um, significantly due to the combination of both variables, but were trending towards it. Uh, this was the case for performance, skin temperature, and maximal blood lactate levels. And for other parameters, such as blood parameters and cognition, we still have to wait to find out. To end, I would like to thank my fellow master students, uh, Bart Roelands, Romain Meuse, and you all for your attention. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Joran, for the nice presentation. Here is, is there any uh, questions for, from the audience? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, what's the rationale to choose the temperature of uh, 25 degrees Celsius in the, in the heat? I ask you this because we did exactly the same thing with the uh, constant load exercise. I mean, to check the independent effect of uh, heat, we were 35 degrees, it was higher than you. Uh, altitude was 2,500 and the combining of the two. And then we observed very different results. Compared to the control, we observed like a similar decrease in the heat. Mm -hmm. uh, altitude was the same. And when you combine the two, you have a further decrease. So it's, it's different from what you observe for like uh, yeah. your sort of exercise. And maybe it can be due to the, the choice of your temperature, which is 15 versus 25. 25 yeah. is quite low. So can you comment on this? Yeah, we wanted to, to go higher. Uh, in the first time, but uh, we couldn't due to the um, the limitations of the of the EMST, so the Iron Medical Solutions cabin. So we had to do it. Ali, we wanted to do it on 3,800 meters, and when we we combined that with temperature, we only could go to 25 degrees. So in future, it is our purpose to go higher in temperature because, as you say, 25 is a moderate highest temperature. Uh, so yeah, in the future we want to go higher. So what is your guess if you apply like a uh, temperature such as 35 to 40 degrees? What, what is your guess my for guess the combination of the two for this kind of exercise which is self-paced? Yeah, my guess would be that... Uh, so that the combining effect um, of uh, both variables on on the increase of the effect on core temperature and T skin gradient gets greater in greater temperatures. So we could also see a significantly difference in performance, a significant difference in performance due to the combination of those variables compared to uh, only the influence of altitude. That would be my guess, I think. Okay, thank you. Stay tuned, it will be up uh, next week. Okay, and, uh, okay. any other question? Yes, any question? Yeah, I just want to add, besides the uh, being quite conservative in the environmental conditions, mm -hmm. your, ex your performance protocol of 30 minutes might not truly push your participants mm -hmm. to the upper limit of hypothermia. So that could be another reason why yep. you conclude heat did not play a role in your experiments. Yeah. yeah, that's because we were also limited in time, so we chose for a protocol that... 30 minutes lasted, and not for a protocol, for example, we did 40 kilometers, but then the time could really go up, so we choose to do a 30 minute time trial for this first study in this case. Okay, uh, is there any other questions? Otherwise, I, I would like to ask a question in regard, we previous presentation discussed the, the role of, uh, of body mass, relative uh, intensity, uh, absolute heat production. You, you saw with hypoxia, the core temperature was lower. Yeah. So what is the reason for the core tem lower core temperature with hypoxia? Uh, yeah, we think that by um, combining temperature with hypoxia, the saturation levels that dropped so significantly uh, reduced performance before core temperature could rise any higher. OK, but it's also Heat production was very different, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't your met when you were at, at altitude, 3,800 meters, yeah. wasn't your absolute metabolic rate a lot lower? Because are, Which light? Were, they, were they at the same absolute metabolic rate for the two? Which light do you mean? Are you referring to a graph? No, 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 no. What was your, abs your metabolic rate for the two? Was, was the metabolic rate standardized? No, no, no. Power output decreased. So your absolute metabolic rates 
considerably lower at altitude. Mm -hmm. That's why you have the lower core temperature, because yeah. it's a function of metabolic rate. Uh, Oli, would, would you like to make a comment? Or? Oh, I, no, I just, no. No, I, um, I, I was just going to reiterate that, that I think um, uh, assuming that the uh, mechanical efficiency uh, was the same between the altitude and the uh, sea level, um, you're going to have a much lower metabolic rate. So metabolic heat production is going to be lower, and that's probably why you're seeing a, 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 a smaller increase in your core temperature. So I would, I, would, I would just be cautious of reporting that as an independent influence of uh, hypoxia. Yeah. It's, a, it's an influence of, it's a secondary influence of hypoxia, the fact that you decrease power output, therefore metabolic rate goes down. But still, very good though. Okay, thank you very much. What well, is clear from, from your study that a difference of 10 degrees ambient temperature doesn't really yeah. uh, result in a difference in cold temperature. And this is so something. Really, we were limited in that difference. Okay, thank you very much for your talk. Um, <laughs> we will have now a break for lunch, I think. Okay, thank you.